Hello, this is meteorologist Basil Numerzitsky with the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook as we start wrapping up this 2023 fire season, looking at September through December. Let's go back here. Um, looking at uh, precipitation and temperature for the past 30 days for the month of August, it has been a cooler than normal uh, month for much of the area. Also looking at above normal precipitation in most areas, up much above normal. Most of Nevada, much of Idaho, anywhere from 200 to 800 percent of normal monthly rainfall. That's a, an amazing amount considering that this is still the traditional uh, monsoon month and uh, also pretty hefty in Utah as well. A lot of areas 50 to uh, or 150 to 200 percent of normal precipitation. I wouldn't pay much attention to some of these drier islands through here. That's mostly to uh, some missing data. Uh, looking at the summer as a whole, again, wetter than normal in all areas. Somewhat wetter, somewhere by 25 to 50 or 60 percent across uh, Utah, but more like 50 to 100 uh, percent above normal of course, much of Nevada, much of Idaho into western Wyoming. The ERCs reflect this the last day of August. So all of them are below the 50th percentile, except for about a half dozen stations or so. But with the next belt of rain coming in for the first few days of September, all of these yellows will be turning green as well. Uh, sagebrush, we still have to look at it. Some areas uh, have dried out to critical levels and they don't moisten up uh, as quickly with rain. So looking here, um, in parts of the western Snake River Plain, uh, sagebrush drop below that critical 100% threshold. That's the dashed red line where fire behavior can get extreme when sagebrush uh, fuel moisture drops below that. And it did drop below, but then it started to make a U-turn, drinking up some of the recent water and uh, from the recent rains and going back up. But a lot of other stations uh, in Idaho stayed dry also in parts of northern nevada also dropping down to about uh 80 percent or so and really not responding as much to the rainfall a lot of the heaviest rain was in far southern nevada um, so that's something to keep in mind drought almost gone across the entire great basin just a few patches here across utah and nevada and the forecast for the next couple of months is for that area to basically disappear and leave most of the area drought-free, maybe except for far, far southeast uh, Utah. In terms of what happens from here, uh, we typically look to see if there's any strong climatic signal, and there is a strong El Nino. Well, it's moderate now, but could become strong, uh, is actually forecast to become a strong El Nino, which typically has some significant effects for the Great Basin. You see the warm waters here off the South, South American coast. Um, the computer models project, and the shades of light red, medium red to dark red indicate a weak El Nino, moderate or strong, uh, and it's expected to be, this is this thick red line, a little hard to see here, this is the expected uh, peak of the El Nino, should reach well into the strong stage near 2.0. So what are some effects of El Nino as we go into the fall and winter months? The Pacific jet stream uh, gets amplified and extends further south, typically wet for the western half or the southern half of California into southern uh, Nevada, uh, parts of southern Utah and the Arizona Strip. Conversely, drier and warmer than normal across the northern Rockies, including much of Idaho. So uh, that's something we look at in terms of uh, what our burn season might look like uh, for prescribed burning and also setting the stage for the next fire season. But uh, we're still in the present, still in fire season 2023. Uh, I want to point out uh, this chart here on the right. The last two weeks of August, copious amounts of rainfall. A lot of it was associated with the remnants of what was once Hurricane Hillary, combined with monsoonal moisture and a Pacific Northwest low pressure system. The areas in yellow correspond to an inch and a half to over two inches of rain. The areas in red, over three inches of rain. And you see this like one and a half to three inches of rain in parts of southern Nevada, a large area of the central uh, mountains of Idaho, and all other areas in this green to dark green, that's a half inch to an inch of rainfall uh, in a lot of areas. So that's what occurred the last two weeks of August. 
Now, the forecast for the first week of September shows another surge of monsoonal moisture and some disturbances coming out of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, this is forecast rainfall, September 1st through the 8th. The blue shades are anywhere from a half inch to an inch and a quarter. The purple shades are uh, close to two inches or more. So you can see heavy rainfall amounts all across large portions of Utah, Nevada, much of uh, Idaho and western Wyoming, also uh, parts of the Sierra Front. Um, areas of uh, west central Nevada, maybe lighter amounts, a tenth to a quarter of an inch. Same for far southeastern um, Utah, but this is just a slam dunk and really moistening the fuels up and not making much of a headway for uh, fire potential anytime in the near future. The 8 to 14 day outlook, uh, this takes us more into the second week of September. So once we get through that wet period in the first week of September, the second week, second week of September will dry out significantly, especially the southern half of the Great Basin. So some weak cold fronts and some light showers in the northern portion. Temperatures basically shading somewhat above normal, especially the further east you go, and the record heat's going to stay up in the Plain States. Now, for the month of uh, September, um, and again, this was done a, a while ago, temperature-wise, near normal, maybe a little bit warmer than normal in the east. This above-normal precipitation, a lot of this is weighed on the first week of September, and we get that big and maybe final surge of monsoonal moisture, otherwise near normal chances. Uh, the prognosis as we go through October, November, December, um, we're looking at warmer than normal temperatures, near normal precipitation, but there is that drier than normal signal across uh, parts of Idaho and into the Pacific Northwest that makes sense with the El Nino pattern. So we put the pieces all together and September through December, basically near normal through the whole period. And basically September is usually the last month where we um, is it's the last full month of fire season. So we did have above normal for parts of uh, southwest Idaho, and northwest Nevada, but given the recent rainfall and more rainfall expected into early September and at least a week or two of drying needed to get fuels back to burning, we feel uh, going back to normal is the best bet. If we look at the entire nation as a whole, you can see that in September, the focus is still Pacific Northwest and Northern California, also parts of Texas and the Midwest. Uh, Midwest stays primed for October. Looks like the fires still possibly critical in uh, along and east of, uh, I should say, along and west of the Cascades for the Pacific Northwest. And then November, December, not much at all, but still with the El Nino concerns for the Hawaiian Islands. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.